Now in this video, we'll discuss about class-based weighted fair queuing. Now class-based weighted fair queuing is an extension to the default queuing mechanism which we used in our previous sections, weighted fair queuing. And here in, in case of class-based, we are going to define our own user-defined classes. So where we are going to create our own class maps like class map one, class map two, class map three, and we're going to define what traffic should come in the class map one, what traffic should be classified in the class map two, and class map three. Like here, let's take an example, I'm using a voice traffic, all the traffic is coming. I'm going to differentiate the voice traffic, and I'm going to differentiate the video traffic and the web traffic in a user-defined class maps. And then we are going to define a guaranteed bandwidth for each and every class at the time of congestion. Now, if there is any congestion in the network, in those kind of scenarios, we are we are going to define a specific minimum bandwidth guaranteed during the congestion. Like, let's say this is your 10 Mbps link or 100 Mbps links, and I'm going to guarantee that in case if there is any congestion, the voice traffic should be guaranteed of minimum of 5 Mbps it can use. Now, if there is no congestion, it can use more than that, but 5 Mbps is something guaranteed in the case of congestions. Now here we are going to define the classes. That's what we call as user defined traffic classes. And we are going to define the default guaranteed bandwidth. Now, if you go back to the previous method, which we discussed like weighted fair queuing mechanism, uh, instead of classes in the weighted fair queuing mechanism, there is an automatic classification based on the prefer, uh, preference based weighting. So even if you do not configure, uh, it's going to use the default fair, weighted fair queuing mechanism. And it's something supported only on 2 Mbps or less than less than 2 Mbps links. And there is a lack of control over classification because we are not classifying anything. It's, it's something done automatically. Now the classification again can be done based on uh, based on different options like we, we did in the basic classes, how to create a class maps. Either you can match the input interface, like maybe you have two interfaces, F0 by 0 and F0 by 1. You can match the traffic based on the incoming interface or based on the marking values like IP precedence and DSCP. Or you can write an ACL where we can write a specific source and destinations in that particular ACL. Or we can we can use something called NBAR network based application recognition where we can directly say an option of match protocol and we can directly match HTTP or any, any specific protocols. Now, if you remember, we did some basic example during the class map, like I got a small lab, a small task, which uh, where, where I'm exactly conferring, uh, saying that the ICMP traffic should be guaranteed from 10 dot network to 2 dot network, should be guaranteed of 128 kbps when it goes on the router one to router two link on S1 by zero interface. And the remaining HTTP traffic should be guaranteed of 64 kbps, that's my requirement. Now to configure this, we can simply go and create a class map and we can simply say match access group. We need to create an ACL which is going to match the source and destination. And if, if you don't have a specific source and destination, we can directly write here match uh, protocol ICMP. So when you say match protocol ICMP, it is going to match all the traffic, ICMP traffic, irrespective of the source and the destinations. But if you have a requirement where you need to specifically tell the source and destinations, we need to write the source and destination based on the ACL and we need to define that particular ACL inside the class map. And then again, we can write uh, web traffic. Web traffic is in a separate class map. So we are going to create two different class maps. One class map is going to match my, my ICMP traffic and the second class map is going to match my uh, web traffic. And then we can we can go to the policy map and we can call those class maps the ICMP traffic and we can define a command called bandwidth in terms of kbps and i'm saying that whatever the traffic match in this class should be guaranteed 128 kbps of bandwidth in case if there is any congestion now similar way we are going to match the web traffic here calling the class map and and we are going to say that the web traffic should be guaranteed of 64 kbps of bandwidth during the congestion. Now, if there's no congestion, they can still use excess of that. But in case of congestion, the minimum guaranteed bandwidth for this traffic is uh, defined with a bandwidth command here. And then we are going to apply this on the interface. Just we need to go to the interface service policy output and CCI. 
now this is one of the lab if you remember we did this same lab in the basic uh, basic classification examples but in this example we are going to practically verify with another uh, example with a class based weighted fair queuing a bandwidth reservations so let's take an example here so i'm going to take the same example or the same lab we, uh, which i have in the workbook documented now i got two routers router 1 and router 2 and between the router 1 and router 2 i'm going to configure the ehrp protocol just to provide the reachability anyway not really compulsory here because we are not going to generate any real time traffic to test it out here but we are going to see how the classification is done and how how we are going to reserve the minimum bandwidth so just configuring the network done auto summary and that's it now my requirement is i want to ensure that my icmp traffic should be guaranteed of 128 kbps that is my first requirement and then http traffic should be guaranteed of 64 kbps and ftp traffic should be guaranteed of 64 kbps and all the remaining unmatched traffic should use the default weighted fair queuing mechanism now to make this possible we need to create three different class maps one class map is going to match the icmp traffic another class map matches the http traffic and the third class map is going to match the uh, match the ftp traffic now as the specific requirement do not need to be specific source and destinations so we can directly get into the class map i am going to create a class map called http and i am going to say match protocol uh, http first i'll start with http it's okay any any order you can write now the next thing will create another class map which is going to match my icmp traffic so i'm going to simply use the same names in capital letters icmp and then i'm going to say match protocol icmp so icmp it matches all the all the icmp traffic from any source or any destination similar way i'm going to match another class map with match protocol uh, ftp okay so if you if you verify the configurations here if I said show run class map, now I can see here I created three different class maps. One class map matches the ICMP traffic, HTTP traffic, and FTP traffic. Now the next thing we need to define a guaranteed bandwidth of 128 kbps for ICMP traffic. Now to make that possible, we need to create a policy map. Any name for the policy map. I'm using CCI as a name, and then we are going to define the ICMP. And if you use question mark, almost all the parameters you'll find here. Right now, we are going to use a bandwidth command to, to define the minimum guaranteed bandwidth. And once we use question mark here, you'll find some multiple options. Like we can either define what should be the minimum guaranteed bandwidth uh, out of that ICMP traffic should get, or we can define in terms of percentage. Like uh, you can even define uh, something like, uh, let's say out of 100%, we can tell that uh, 10 percent of the traffic should be 10 percent of the bandwidth should be reserved for icmp traffic so if it is 10 mbps links automatically 10 percent means one mbps will be will be reserved for icmp traffic like in my scenario it's 1544 kbps on this serial link so it's going to be 10 percent means around around 154 uh, kbps will be reserved for for icmp traffic now probably i have a separate lab documented where uh, I have used only percentage values instead of bits per second. Now in this scenario, I'm going to use, I'm going to define specific amount of bandwidth. We can also define uh, what, what should be the guaranteed bandwidth or we can define in terms of percentages. And the next thing is, the next thing we need to define the class map HTTP. And then I'm going to define the guaranteed bandwidth of 64 kbps. And then I'm going to use FTP traffic and the guaranteed bandwidth of 64 kbps and for all the remaining traffic uh, we, we generally defined as a class default and if you leave by default uh, if you if you are using this link if it is less than 2 mbps link automatically it is going to use weighted fair queuing automatically even if you don't define okay so the automatic classification will be based on the precedence based weight even if you do not configure a fair queue command and if you're using any high speed link, probably it will use first in first out mechanisms. Now we can specifically define to use weighted fair queuing in case of high speed links by using a fair queue command. So now if you verify show run policy, 
shown on policy map you can see these are the different policy map we created inside we have we have defined the class and the guaranteed bandwidth and you can also use a command called show policy map now here it will show you the bandwidth allocated for each and every class and then the last step is implementing on the interface now you define the service policy with the input or output as per my scenario the router one leaving the interface so it's going to be output and the policy name is cci press enter now for verification we can use a command called show policy map interface s1 by 0 now here you can see on this interface there is a separate class map which matches the icmp traffic and here you can see the bandwidth of 128 kbps reserve now you'll see some uh, drops as well if in case if it's getting dropped but right now we don't have a real time traffic going on so what i'll do is i'll try to generate some traffic from router 1 to router 2 just some ping traffic because we have matched the icmp traffic also now once we generate the traffic if you verify show policy map let me check did i configure on the right router no uh, actually i configured these commands on the on the router 2 so it doesn't matter so let me let me just verify show run class map it's okay anyway so i have configured on the router 2 instead of router 1 either i can copy paste or i can just take an example like router 2 leaving interface now in my scenario the interface leaving to router 2 so i'm going to generate the traffic to 10.1.1.1 and the source is 21.1.1 and if you verify show policy map interface s1 by 0 now here i should see the packets matches now you can see the default class map matches the packets because all the remaining traffic it can be a control traffic between the ehrb messages uh, that matches and i should see a class map matching the packets here you can see there are 10 packets which are generated five ping messages before and now and whenever you see any packets matches here you will see how many packets matched and how many bytes of information transferred here by using these specific commands now there is an alternate way to configure this class based weighted field king either we can define a specific uh, specific bandwidth by using a bandwidth option and we can define like 128 kbps or 64 kbps or 64 kbps whatever the bandwidth that is one possible option or we can define in terms of percentages also like if you if you don't want to get into a specific bandwidth we can tell that my HTTP, FTP traffic. This is the next lab which I documented in the workbook here. Now, this is based on the percentage options instead of uh, instead of uh, manually defining the bandwidth. Now, in this, I'm saying that all my HTTP traffic, FTP traffic, and TFTP traffic should be guaranteed minimum of 20% uh, of the bandwidth on this interface, and the X Windows application should get a minimum of 10% of the bandwidth. And I have some database servers, SQL servers. And that should get a guaranteed of 25% of the bandwidth in case of congestions. Now to implement this again, we can go to the command line and we can simply configure the same thing. Like I can create a class map, which is going to match all my traffics and I can define what should be the percentage of the bandwidth. I think I got a second lab here. You can see this is a second lab. I can create a class map, which matches all the three protocols as a class web. X Windows, which matches the protocol X Windows, and SQL, which matches my SQL server. And then inside the policy map, I can define the class, and then I can define in terms of percentages rather than defining in terms of specific values. Now, there are two different options we can configure here. And in applying, it's going to be the same. Now, I got three different scenarios with the three different labs documented in the workbook, which is going to uh, where you where you'll see exactly how class based weighted fair queen can be used now again when it when it comes to implementation it's going to be the same we need to create a class map and then in that class map we need to define what traffic should be matched and inside the policy map we need to define the guaranteed bandwidth options now now one of the major advantage uh, we get here is we are going to define our own classifications of the traffic and we can define our minimum bandwidth allocation for each and every class and we are going to provide some finer granularity and scalability 
But again, the drawback with this class-based weighted fair queuing is, let's say if you have a voice traffic coming up and we are going to define some guaranteed bandwidth of for the specific voice, and but still if your voice traffic has to be given a more priority rather than, rather than simply reserving the bandwidth. So that is where, you know, the class-based weighted fair queuing has a small disadvantage. Now to overcome this, we can use another queuing mechanism called low latency queuing where we are going to combine the class-based weighted fair queuing along with the priority queuing. Now, in case of low latency queuing, what we are going to, what we are going to do is we are going to define a priority for a specific traffic like voice, which has to be sent first before it sends any other traffic. At the same time, we'll ensure that each and every uh, traffic is differentiated. So we'll be talking about LLQ probably much more in detail in our next session with, with labs here.